The Amiwam invasion in Africa has claimed another victim, Ghana. Scientists are calling for quick, multi-institutional collaboration and coordinated action against the full Amiwam. The invasive pest poses a threat to Africa's food sustainability. It feasts on maize crops and has destroyed entire fields in several African countries. Scientists want to combat the outbreak to avoid further economic hardship, especially for small-scale farmers. Full Amiwam invasions have been reported in all countries in Southern Africa except Lesotho. Countries in Eastern, Western and Central Africa are also affected. Let's get you more now on that story. I'm joined live in our Nairobi studios by Lawrence Kiguro. He is the Associate Director of World Vision, Livelihoods and Resiliency. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, let's begin with that invasion of the Amiwam here in East Africa region. Just how much of a threat does it pose to crops, especially considering the region has been experiencing drought? Yes, it's causing a serious threat to, to our food security situation here, here, here in Africa and especially here in Kenya because first of all, you look at the, the Kenyan situation, it's affecting the green basket of Kenya, which is the North Rift and the Western Kenya region. Number one, it's also coming at a time when we are coming from a drought situation and therefore farmers have already ex exhausted all their stocks of whatever they had in terms of food. Number three, the fall of armyworm is new to Africa and therefore that makes it a bit a bit difficult to understand it and therefore control it. Number, number four, I would also say that uh, the, the armyworm is, unlike the African armyworm, which we have explained before, is um, uh, feeds on different types of crops. The other armyworm normally feeds on maize and generally grasses, but this one can feed from, from maize, millet, sorghum, grasses, you know, uh, cowpeas, you know, even napier grass. And that means they can really be, be very, very destructive. So we have everything to get worried in terms of how to control it. And because it's now here with us, we really have to come up with long-term measures on how it can be controlled. Luckily, the government has, has recognized that. And recently, the, the, the government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, called a meeting of all the stakeholders here in Nairobi to discuss ways and means of co how it can be, com you know, it can be addressed, the problem can be addressed. And um, some of the issue, things that were come out from that meeting was that we need to, to be very, uh, to come up with the materials, educational materials that can be given to communities out there and the farmers so that they know how to deal with it. We also need to, to, to come up with a, a lot of awareness programs uh, on TV, on local FM radios, uh, farmer field days where farmers can be educated on the same. We also need to, deal, to do more of surveillance and monitoring of the same so that we are able to know how it is moving and how to control the same. And more so, we need to do some kind of long-term research so that we come with locally developed solutions on how it can be controlled. Because what we are doing right now is based on literature that, is, that, has, been research that has been done elsewhere. Now, speaking of control, it's decimated crops in Southern Africa, but South Africa specifically has managed to deal with it. What lessons can we draw as countries affected by this armyworm from South Africa? Okay, one th thing that I hear is that uh, in South Africa, of course, it was a, it, the, the rains came a bit earlier th th than here in Italy because for, reasons for, for climatic reasons, because uh, we normally have the rains, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the weeds, you know, uh, carrying the rains, you know, affect, passing through the region much, much earlier than in East Africa. And um, because of that, they have had some experience earlier than us in terms of how it can be controlled, using cultural measures, biological measures, and the like. But above all, what um, we are gathering is that in, in, in South Africa, they are, they are coming up with, uh, they have, they have accepted, ac accepted the issue of using genetically modified uh, crops, which are said to be tolerant to, to some of them are said to be tolerant to, to, to the amyomo outbreak. And maybe that's a lesson that you can learn for other countries. I know other countries are still debating on whether to go for the GMOs or not. But I think if there's still a lesson that you can learn from this is that some of the varieties that are GMO, that uh, they can be tolerant to, 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 to the animal. Yeah, oh. especially what you call the BT, the, the, the BT maize, where they introduce, uh, you know, a, a, a bacteria and it produces toxins which are able to, once the, the, the animals feed on them, they, they, they are not able to survive beyond that. All right. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us. We had here in studio Lawrence Kiguro, of course, talking about the crisis that the armyworm has caused in the African continent. So what more do we know about the full armyworm and its seemingly insatiable appetite? Here's CGTN's Clementine Logan. The fall army worm is actually a caterpillar that devours crops and then turns into a moth. 
The pest is native to the Americas and new to Africa. One theory is that the eggs or the caterpillars arrived on the continent in imported produce. The armyworm eats a host of crops including maize, cereals, cotton and even tobacco. So how does it move so fast? Well, females can lay up to 1,000 eggs at a time and can produce multiple generations without pause. According to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, it's taken just eight weeks for the pest to spread to six southern African countries. Once it turns into a moth, it can migrate long distances. Outbreaks have been reported in southern, eastern, western and central Africa. And where it goes, it wreaks havoc. Army worm has attacked more than 80 different plant species, including maize, a staple food in sub-Saharan Africa on which more than 200 million people depend. It could cost the continent $3 billion in the coming year. So how do we stop it? Well, as it burrows deep into the stems of plants, it's quite difficult to find. Insecticides are only really effective in the pest's early stages, and experts say some populations have developed resistance. Other approaches involve digging trenches, using natural predators like birds to eat them, or burning crops. The FAO says tackling the outbreak requires quick and coordinated action, a massive awareness campaign, and scientific innovation. Back to you. Thank you, Clem.